Another episode of the Masochist, credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing the series. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck, and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card, and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, guys, so we're back here. We have actually a few different announcements to make. Number one, let's go to the shop. I've got an announcement to here. There's two cards that we cannot get, like we physically cannot ever unlock. And I think it sucks that we can't get these because I think they're really good cards for the Masochist Challenge. When we click on cards included in this pack, this is the Master Pack. Um, turns out we actually can get Raigeki in, the, I believe, like one update ago. They actually finally added Raigeki to the Master Pack, so you can actually pull in the Master Pack. But there are two very important cards that we absolutely cannot pull in the Master Pack. It is physically impossible. We can never pull it. Uh, you guys bounced around different ideas of what to do and how to settle this problem of not being able to get Monster Reborn and reinforcements of the army. I think we finally have come to a solution. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call two URs, and I think somebody also suggested this in the comments. I'm going to call two URs, and if I pull one of the, if I pull the UR that I call in advance, then I get to craft or I get to go get uh, Monster Reborn from the solo mode. So. I'm just going to pick two random URs, that way we keep the randomness of it all, we keep, because uh, other people suggested that I do it if, if I get to a certain rank, or if I, uh, a few suggestions were thrown out, uh, if I beat certain decks, then I could do it, but at the same time, I understand the whole point of the challenge is to have random things. So we're going to call two URs in advance that I'm never going to use, number one is going to be the windup, I'm never going to use this, it's two windup monsters, not a bad card, but I'm never going to get all of the windup, so if I ever pull the windup, this is Monster Reborn. From here on, going forward, Monster Reborn is this. Um, if I pull it this episode, you guys are gonna yeah, probably gonna think I, I did that on purpose, but yes, that in advance. Um, and then another one, I gotta pick something else I'll probably never use. All right, I found another one we probably won't ever use. So, Reinforcements of the Army, if I ever pull this FA Shining Star GT, this is Reinforcements of the Army now. It is no longer FA Shining Star GT. If I pull that in the Master Pack, I get to go grab uh, reinforcements of the army this is the only way these are the only two cards in the entire game that you cannot acquire in any other way so this is how i'm going to acquire them so again this is reinforcements of the army and this right here is monster reborn if i ever do pull them in the in the master pack that way we still have the whole randomness thing and we still have access to the card so i think that solves one of the major problems that we have all right next up we've got our deck which we're gonna re we're gonna fix up right now uh, last episode, I opened, I think, like 10 Master Packs. And in addition to opening 10 Master Packs, I believe I opened countless Legacy Packs, like a lot of Legacy Packs. And the best cards that I pulled were a common Geonated Transversal, which is legitimately a good card. And the second best card that I actually pulled, believe it or not, was Unpossessed. These are all, look, look at all this. This is all new stuff right here. This is all new, new, new. All of this was pulled last episode, and all of this like wasn't good enough. I pulled like almost a, probably like a hundred cards last episode, and the best card I pulled, shockingly, is Unpossessed. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is one of my least favorite archetypes of all time, and here I am stuck playing it somehow. It's like I'm in like an, an eternal hell. But now I'm gonna fix up the deck real quick, and uh, we're going to. Uh, remove some things and we're going to play uh, this card for sure. We're going to play Unpossessed. I think it's actually going to work. This is actually a really good card. A Charmer Monsters uh, can't be destroyed by battle. I believe that is the Charmers are the ones that are flip effect monsters. Let me let me go check that out. All right, I have it separated by spellcasters here. Uh, we've got certain cards that we can summon off the Charmers off of the uh, Unpossessed. Like I said, Unpossessed as I was talking. Uh, Charmer Monsters can't be destroyed by battle. I believe those are the certain ones not all of them are included in that so this is not a charmer this is familiar possessed lina so that does not is not included but i believe it's just the monsters with 
1500 defense. I, I figured out which ones. All right, so I finally have it pulled up. These are the one monsters that can't be destroyed by battle. The flip effect ones that flip, target one fire monster, take control of it. These ones cannot be destroyed by battle. Um, so we don't have any of these, even though they're only commons. But we do have some of these, and these I'm going to play in the deck for sure. I'm going to bring all of these probably back. I'm going to build the deck around them. Actually, I have the one that steals a wind monster, but honestly, I don't think that's really worth it. Uh, because not a lot of decks even play wind, so what in the world would I even be stealing? Uh, but more importantly, I have Spellcasters pulled up here. Interestingly enough, I can actually search Dogmatic and Ecclesia from the deck. If I had Dogmatic of Punishment, that would be so disgusting. Um, so, as I keep coming back to this Unpossessed card, basically what it does is... When a familiar possessed monster attacks, we gain 800 during the damage calculation. And then also, if a monster is destroyed by battle or card effect, well, this card is face up in spell and trap card zone. We can special summon a spellcaster with 1500 defense. Any spellcaster with 1500 defense with a different attribute from the one destroyed. That's actually quite good because it gives us a really, really nice grind game. Um, if we draw it, and they can summon any spellcaster with 1500 defense, and also the monster is getting destroyed can be any monster, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, that affects once per turn. We can summon an attack or face down defense position, which is also usable. Um, yeah, overall, that's just a really, really good recursion card. I think I'm going to rebuild this deck real quick. Uh, we can technically summon Dogmatic Ecclesia. She can't be destroyed by a monster special summon from the extra deck, which could actually save our ass in a lot of situations. Like, if we, it doesn't matter which, like, let's say we have this in defense mode. This gets destroyed. We summon Dogmatic Ecclesia. Most of the time, when people are going for game, they have a bunch of extra deck monsters. Dogmatic Ecclesia actually can block it, which is kind of cool. Um, but then there's another card that I, I discovered that I had and I forgot all about and I should have been playing the entire time and I think all of us forgot about it, um, including a lot of you guys. Nobody reminded me of this when I pulled it, but I'm about to find it real quick. All right, the card I'm talking about, surprisingly, is this, Ed of the Sun Magician. I should have been playing this card the entire time. Uh, this card basically on normal summon can let you special summon a 1500 defense a 1500 defense uh spellcaster from your hand or deck and face down to physical position now what you're saying is well you know how's that good how's summoning a monster from your deck and face down to defense position any good anyway right what's good is that we were already playing all of the charmers anyway so i could have just replaced at any point this card with one of the charmers and i would have been able to just throw a charmer onto the board absolutely free of charge worst case scenario it eats an ash. Best case scenario, it throws a free monster onto the board so that when we just have Time Thief out there and we we kind of tag Time Thief out, we still have something to protect our life points. It's absolutely completely free. Like, you just have this monster on the board free of charge. It also lets you flip during your opponent's turn the face down monster, which would be good if we had more of the charmers, like the dark charmer or the light charmer. That would be decent. Uh, but because we don't have those, that secondary effect isn't really usable. But that effect is actually really good. Again, it's just going to bait Ash Blossoms. Um, also, it kind of works with Penguin Squire, uh, which is nice, uh, but Penguin Squire is another card that might be on the chopping block, so we'll have to see. So we added all of that stuff. There's a few cards that I'm going to remove. I think I'm going to remove at Analyzer because um, the truth is he's only good going second, and the Tuner ability really only helps us get into Cyber Slash, which I haven't gone into in such a long time. So I think I'm cutting that. I think I'm cutting at Emancipator. Uh, I think I'm cutting... There's a few other cards I'm cutting... I'm cutting this guy right here, the Chow Sai. I'm cutting him. I might even cut Penguin Squire temporarily because he hasn't been really coming up all that often. I'm also going to cut Shadow Princess of Ohm, even though we just got it. I'm going to cut that, and I think the deck has already gotten significantly better. I think I'm going to cut one of the Linas, and I think this is the new deck that we've got going on here. I'm going to save it. Um, overall, I'm quite happy with how it looks. I have to add one more card to the extra deck, too. I think I'm just going to add back the Code Breaker Virus Dragon because it's a Link 2 that's quite strong. I could probably find some other Rank 4 to, to go into, but I think that should be good. I think that's quite good there, so I'm going to save that. Um, that should be good enough. But this is the new deck. It is now even more back to actually the Familiar Possess and the Spell uh, centric, the uh, Spellcaster centric deck. I cut a few cards just that were a little bit bricky in the last few games where we draw like we would draw like Photon Thrasher and then we'd also draw. Uh, for example, like Tenyi Nahata, and they would conflict, or we would draw uh, 
the Penguin Squire, and then we draw Photon Thrasher, and they wouldn't do anything together. But now I think we have a decent balance of cards where we can consistently get the Time Thief, but at the same time, uh, we can still utilize the Unpossessed. And I think this is an interesting card. I would like to pull more copies of it because it is an interesting card. If I can have more, or more of the, uh, we're going to click on related cards here. Um, more of the cards that have to do with the Charmers would actually be really good. Like, I'm, I, I pull Hidden Arsenal bulk every single time. And I would love it to be some of these Charmer cards for once. Even like some of the URs here are de actually quite decent. Even this, this would be crazy. Dark the Dark Charmer would be like a bananas card. And a lot of even like Lila would be really good. But let's let's get into a couple of games. I think this should be an interesting uh, an interesting duel to see. All right, obviously we've deranked here. We're back to gold five. Uh, good enough, right? All right, so we're going first. Our hand's looking pretty good already. I mean, look at this. Dimensional Fissure, Dinomiscus. Uh, we've got Endymion. So this draws us a card. This gets us a random card, and it gives our opponent life points. I'm going to go with probably the Magistus. I'm just going to go with this first. This is actually a pretty good card, too. We're going to activate the Magistus. Target one in the, in the deck. Somebody in the comments told me this, and I'm so thankful that they did. Target one. We're going to equip this. This is such a crazy combo. Now we activate artemis and uh we're going to search another copy of itself and now we can activate the effect of endymion to destroy this card right here and then we get to draw a card and put one back i'm just going to put back endymion i think because the snake eye card might be a better follow-up so we're going to put that back when there's someone out nefariousness our opponent did not see that coming they couldn't max c i think i'm just going to go deep fissure now before they can max c us and now we go into I believe Time Thief is probably best, right? We probably go into Time Thief right here. And now we have a pretty decent follow-up. We have Roach Rochka, and we have the Paleozoic Dinomiscus, which is pretty good. Like, all of that was really actually good. I'm in shock that that went as well as it did. We have follow-up. We have a lot of cool stuff that we have accomplished there. And it just depends on what our opponent is playing. Depending on what deck they're running, we either lose or win here. Uh, but we've got a few interruptions. We've got, uh, we'll see what we get on Time Thief. But we've got Deep Fissure. we got a Spell. Awesome. They're playing Rockets, most likely. And then we've got Paleozoic, which is... I'm going to put Chaining on so that can possibly banish their normal summon. But do I even need to banish their normal summon? I mean, we've got Fissure in play. It definitely prevents them from playing if we banish their normal summon, but I guess we'll, we'll see what it is. Uh, so, I can banish this normal summon, and then they can't go into the rocket. But if they link it away, they'll banish it anyway. We can banish whatever comes out next, but just to avoid a lot going on, I think I'm just going to Paleozo and Dinomiscus. I'm just going to banish the Tracer. I think that would be smart. And he's going to quick effect to pop what? itself the special summon I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that i'm okay i'm actually okay with that because that'll uh pop itself he's going to summon something else lock himself into darks and now if he does make um striker dragon he's obviously going to be losing a lot of stuff so i'm actually kind of okay with that so he's going to go into this rocket rocket recharger i guess i have to discard anyway i'm going to discard the sinful spoils Rochka is probably better. And then we just leave the, the Time Thief Redoer. He's going to go Dragon's Ravine. That does nothing anyway. Yeah, that does nothing anyway. Act, every, everything getting sent is just getting banished. So it's it's totally pointless. Yeah, he's going to banish Lubellion. Okay, cool. And whatever's getting sent is also getting banished. Looking back, I should not have used that on Rocket Tracer, the Dinomiscus, or Dinomiscus. That was just kind of a dumb play. I should not have done that uh, because you can just tag out anyway. But I guess we forced the tag out, and the tag out is a hard once per turn. He's going to send uh, Bistial, Baldrake to banish it. Okay, whatever. Uh, now he's going to... He had this the whole time, so I was playing around him getting to this, and he got it anyway, so it doesn't even matter. I was, gonna, I was afraid that he was going to go into Striker Dragon, so now he's going to summon more from his hand. Like I said, most of the... And this is a dead card now because he's already used the effect. Yeah, most of these... Like, he's going to link these two away. They're going to get banished. I guess you could still use Pisty technically because Pisty does... Uh, yeah, you can still use Pisty. He's going to go straight into Boral Savage. He has nothing in Graveyard, so that's just a 3,000 attack body. 
fine with me. I mean, he's he's really at a huge disadvantage. He lost everything. I don't think he realizes what he's like not accomplishing here. Um, main battle phase. I think I'm just gonna time thief redo her here. Um, just gonna banish it. I'm cool with banishing it because. Um, yeah, I'm going to banish it, draw a card, too late for the Ghost Bell, doesn't really help anything now, but we just have to out a Boral Savage, which we can definitely out a Boral Savage, we can actually, I'm going to see what I can do, but we can definitely out a Boral Savage, I'm not too stressed about it, it's 3,000 attack and it does nothing right now, so, we're good, so we're going to bring our monster back, and Nefariousness isn't really going to help anything right now, nope, if we had Unpossessed, Nefariousness would be really good, uh, win doesn't really do anything for us. Let's see what we grab off the top. If we grab a spell. Yes, we got a spell. I'm just going to go ahead and activate this now because he doesn't have anything else. So maybe if we can draw an out, that would be really good. Uh, we get a photon thrasher. Not really helpful. Okay, so what are we going to do here? I, I discarded this, which I shouldn't have discarded probably looking back. Because that would have outed this Borload Savage. But I'm not too stressed about the Borload Savage, like I said give him 500 life points i'm going to draw a card we're in a little bit of a stupid situation right now i didn't know what i, I just assumed rochka would be better to keep which looking back i, I probably should have kept the boral savage uh bestial magnemut is a card i can use to search tiamaton and i mean that's not bad right yeah it's not bad i mean i guess we can use that banish a card from the graveyard or banish a card from his graveyard which card am I banishing? There's no lights or darks in the graveyard anywhere. Oh, the Artemis. I was like, where is this light or dark? Uh, yeah, I guess we can summon this. We can summon this for sure. Banish this. Ghost spell. No, I don't want to ghost spell my own monster. Uh, summon this out. Unfortunately, he put it in a column where we can't steal it with... Uh, cannot steal it, which sucks. But... I'm trying to come up with a little plan here. Yeah, we can't steal it with Transverser. We can't do that. Actually, what does he have in hand? Do you think we could destroy this, actually? I think we could probably destroy it. Uh, you think he has a monster in hand? Can he negate this? We'll give it a try, and if he can negate it, then he's just losing resources anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And um, I'll put it... I'll put it here. That way, just in case we get TM Atomic, we can maybe blow up this column. So we're going to activate this guy by uh, discarding the Photon Thrasher, targeting the Borlode Savage. And if he has a monster, he has a monster. But if he doesn't, then we're good. He did have a monster, so we negated it. And if we could just get to one more monster, that would be sick, but we cannot. So I think we just end phase here, and we search for TM Aton. Yeah, we just search for Tiamaton, and we Tiamaton can ultimately get rid of this Borlo Savage for us. Can't believe we're having trouble outing a 3,000 attack monster. We had the out, which was the simple spoils, but now we're having a little bit of a little bit of issues getting getting the out back out. We got a monster. Okay, so we can save time, Thief. At least that's good. He's gonna switch that to defense. I I I can't even imagine why somebody would do that. Battle phase in defense. And the main phase and end phase. Okay. So we go and do nothing, right? We do nothing, yeah. No, we don't want to do that. Alright, Lightning Vortex pretty much wins us this game. Uh, we're going to activate Time Thief. And get a spell, which is nice. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, detach this, grab a spell. Grab a uh, draw, I should say. Fire Barrier Statue really wins us this game. Fire Barrier Statue is like, seal the deal. Uh, I can activate this dude, actually. I'll discard Ghost Bell. And I shouldn't have discarded Ghost Bell. So, I don't know, it's too late at night right now. It really is. He's going to probably discard to negate this. Good for us. All right, so he's going to negate this. But now we can go Lightning Vortex... And we're going to discard... I like Tiamaton, so I'm going to keep... I'm going to discard the Possessed. I'm going to destroy his monster. Yeah, and then we would have won right there. And, yeah, that's... He didn't have anything left. So, basically, I misplayed, like, a lot of times there, but our deck was actually just too good. 
and we ended up winning. And by our deck was too good. I actually mean Dimensional Fissure totally carried that game, even though it's it's like three o'clock in the morning and I shouldn't be dueling right now. All right, we've got three, two Legacy tickets and Science Soldier. All right, let's open up this Master Pack. We'll see what we get out of here. Always interesting to see what you get out of here. There's always so many crazy cards that you could possibly get. Solidarity is actually possibly not bad, but we do we do play other things than Spellcaster, so maybe not. Uh, Alien card, not going to work. Insector, probably not going to work. Sharanui card, good, but Sharanui's are a little slow. Stingray is actually a decent card. Summons as a level 5, can't be destroyed by battle. That can definitely be usable in certain situations, already have that. And then we've got, I think this is generic, two level 3 fire monsters. If I was playing Salamangrates maybe, but not the way it is. Another Vampire Sucker, that is either our second or third copy. And this is a really good zombie card, it's just we don't have like the really, really good zombie stuff like Zombie World, but this is a good card actually. Um, and the Solidary, like I said, is a decent card. All right, legacy tickets. Let's crack these open. We'll see what we get. Uh, people have been asking me to just skip now. Okay, I'll try to skip for this episode. If you guys don't like me skipping, then let me know. But I'm going to be skipping from now on, so I'm going to click skip. Uh, this is what we've got. Non-fusion area is not a great card because if you play against anything but fusions, it's terrible. This is an iron chain card, a little bit too slow. Uh, machine monster, one machine monster gains 700, and this... Target one monster, that target loses 700 until the end phase. Not a bad card, but not exactly a great card either. So, yeah, I think none of these are really playable for us. All right, so we just got loaded into this game. Uh, we lost a coin flip. Our opponent chose to go first. They are playing what well, looks like the Winged Dragon of Raw. Uh, they're going to search Winged Dragon of Raw. Our hands are really kind of good. Like, really kind of good. So, I mean, I guess we'll see what they draw but we really do actually have a fairly solid hand tenyi rochka small world uh, millennium revelation is not that great of a card. like we have a very good hand and i'm not too concerned with what our opponent's going to be able to do but they've actually got i mean they've got a decent half decent situation going here they're going to search monster reborn they also have got the true sun god which is quite good um so they're going to be able to i think set up an immortal phoenix Based on the cards that I'm seeing here, they're going to be able to set up an Immortal Phoenix. They're going to Special Summon back Winged Dragon of Raw on turn 1. Since it's Special Summon, it won't have the effect to gain life points. So, that's kind of pointless. It's just a zero defense monster. But like I said, they can use True Sun God, send something to the graveyard. They're playing a playing a 60 card deck, I believe. And they, not 60, is that 62, 3... Seven, yes, yeah, so they are playing. They're playing a 60 card deck, and they managed to draw this two card combo with the Millennium Revelation and the True Sun God, which is they're not even going to go for it. They're not even going to go for it. They drew the combo to get the the Wing Dragon of Raw Immortal. Fe or maybe they are going to go for it. I was going to say if you don't go for that and you actually pulled it off, it's it would be a shame for everybody. So they're going to send that, and they're going to be able to summon Phoenix. Phoenix outs himself, I think, at the end phase. Yeah. What is this? During the end phase, it, it's, it outs itself. During, yeah, once per turn, during the end phase, send this to the grave, especially summon one, Wing Dragon Ross Sphere mode. I mean, they did all that just to send that to the graveyard. I mean, the whole point, they should have summoned that on, on their turn when, when I ended. And if they did that, they would be able to pay 1,000 life points, send one monster to the graveyard. That's not once per turn, and it doesn't target. That effect's really good. This card in general is just really good. It's just a little bit too hard to out. And then the, it's a little bit too hard to get out uh, most of the time. And then unfortunately, the, the the damn thing, as good as it is, actually outs itself at the end phase, which is like the dumbest thing ever. Um, this can be a little bit difficult for us to out too, if I'm going to be totally honest with you. Uh, because this card can't be targeted and uh, the only way we can get rid of it is really like Time Thief Redoer I, I, is the only card I can think of. I'm going to go ahead and activate Nahata to Special Summon. Yeah, this can't be targeted by, I believe, card effects, and it can't be attacked. So we can't target it for attacks. They're going to summon No Way Sneaky C. I don't care that he summons that. That's going to end up destroying his board more than it will mine. Yeah, I don't really, I don't, legitimately don't care about that. It's going to destroy this and it's going to destroy that. So I don't really care. I'm going to summon Rochka now. 
and I'm going to activate her effect. Yeah, I'm going to activate her effect. Uh, let's see what they have in graveyard. They don't have any lights because these are unfortunately divine beasts in the graveyard. Rochka is going to give us some cool stuff to do. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Um, we can actually destroy the sneaky sea now. We could have destroyed this, but we put a monster here. Uh, we could destroy this. This is this is going to be an interesting duel. There's a lot going on already. I'm I'm already kind of amazed. Um, how are we going to out this? I don't actually know. I don't. I really. I legitimately don't know how to out this. I guess it's going to out itself. Shift control during the end phase cannot attack. Oh, here. Let's see. You can tribute this card, especially when winged dragon of raw, ignoring so many conditions. Like I said, this card's a little tough to out for me, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set. There can only be one. I'm going to activate Tiamaton. And I'm going to summon it right here. And I'm going to blow up this column. So I don't have to worry about that sneaky C. Um, Ron Ryu, I can special summon or I can... Did I normal summon? Yeah, I normal summon Rochka. I can also check what else I can really get to here. And I, again, I, I don't really actually know how to help this card. It can be a little bit of an issue. Okay, I think I know what to do here. I think I know what to do here. So we special summon Ron Ryu. We special summon the Ron Ryu out. And then we go into Geonator Transverser with one and two. Yeah, Geonator Transverser with one and two. And then we're going to activate Geonator Transverser. We're going to take his monster and give him that monster so now we can go into we can go either we can go into boar load actually i don't know what this is this could be some weird flip effect nonsense so i kind of don't want to risk too much so i'm going to go into code virus with these two and i think i just want to go into the goat which is I want to go into Mech Knight Crusade Avermax because he's going to be good even later on when everything gets outed anyway. I don't know what this could be. This could be some foolishness. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the Mech Knight Crusade Avermax. And I'm just going to go to battle phase. And I'm going to attack over my own my own card. And since I attack over my own card, it was special summon. I'm going to do 3,000 damage here. And I know I did a lot of work just to end on one Crusade Avermax, but that's pretty much our deck. Uh, and then we're going to just end on that. I think that's quite good. I see still has two cards left. We have There Can Only Be One and Dimensional Prison, Small World. We've got a decent little little loop going on here. So overall, like I'm kind of impressed with how much our deck has been doing. Even though maybe the plays haven't been super optimal, but I'm very happy with like generally what our deck does. This is just the slime token thing. I don't really care. I can actually just activate that and then it'll prevent everything to do with this. Yeah, he's going to activate this effect. Um, special summon two. I'm just going to, there can only be one. And he just can't do that effect now because this summons two aqua monsters. He is an aqua monster, so he's going to get stuck with a 500 attack monster on the board. So that's good enough. And he can tribute, um, he can tribute um, this card and then set a metal reflect slime. But that doesn't actually matter because, uh, yeah, he can tri yeah, tribute this, set the Metal Reflect Slime. But the Metal Reflect Slime is actually kind of tough to out, too. Because it's a 3,000 defense monster with zero attack. <laughs> so that can be a little bit tough for us to out. So, But the good thing is it can't summon, what's his name? It can't summon the, the big monster. So at least that's positive. It can't summon the uh, monster from the extra deck. I can go into Small World and check what I can do here. I mean, Small World can get us a barrier statue, and then we just win the game if we're able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hopefully he doesn't respond instantly. If he responds to the to us grabbing the barrier statue, then we're kind of screwed. We just don't want him to activate this right now. All right, he's going to activate Sun God Unification. And then he's going to activate... Yeah, he's going to activate the... Metal Reflect Slime. So we got to find an out to the Metal Reflect Slime. Sun God Unification is fine. Inari Fire. Uh, what can we search that would get rid of this stupid card? Alright, so I think I found the answer. I think we have to banish the Bestial... I think we have to get the Bestial Magnemut. So I think we banish this because they share dark and nothing else. 
Uh, so I think we banish the purple poison and then we can get to Bistial Magnemut. And I think Bistial Magnemut is actually the solution to all of this because Bistial Magnemut um, will allow us to add back Tiamaton and then I'm going to have to out my own Bistial Magnemut. And then, yeah, I'm going to activate this. I'm going to out my own Bistial Magnemut by banishing. It doesn't matter who, but we'll banish this. And then I will special summon Bistial Magnemut right here. And I'll activate that. And then that will allow me to get back Tiamaton. Next turn, we just link this away, uh, make a not dragon. And, uh, yeah, as long as we can make a not dragon. Yeah, I can't attack over this because it has zero attack, so nothing happens, unfortunately. Um, now we just pass, I think. He can't do much either. I'm going to add back Tiamaton from the graveyard. And next turn, we can out this for sure. And then I think we can just win the duel. As long as we draw a monster, of course. Alright, they're going to set another mystery card here. And unfortunately, we can't summon this right now because we used the dragon to get it back. And maybe there can only be one. So we have like a few different things that don't work right now. But eventually, eventually we're going to be able to out this. They're going to go to battle phase again. The other thing, if we can get to a link 2, we can go into that other dude. Forbidden Chalice is enough to beat over this, actually. Yeah, I think that's that's enough, so... Uh, we're going to go to battle phase. Hopefully this is not another copy of this. Uh, we're going to declare attack. Uh, we're going to put chaining on. Uh, declare, no. Uh, damage step, no. And right now it's going to be damage calc. Yes, we want to activate forbidden chalice. And we're going to use that on our own monster. That'll make it 34 and we can attack over that finally. Now we can finally swing in for some direct attacks, which is cool. And I think we just pass now. Unless they have something. Ugh, this dude. I mean, it's fine again because he just summons Guardian Slime. And it's this card's a little bit annoying, but not annoying enough. Because it is actually kind of decent out. So we're just going to go to end phase here. This card's not that bad. Again, he can't just tribute it to summon from the extra deck. So it just doesn't really do as much. Uh, we haven't been able to get to Barrier Statue yet. But the second we get the barrier statue, this duel is like really over. But I'm glad the first two games were as competitive as they were. <laughs> like uh, the first two duels of the of the new season, right? We have Dragon Link, which was very competitive. And now we have this. Uh, the gods are a little bit of a problem because they are tribute summons, so they can easily deal with Crusade Avermax, right? The, the Winged Dragon of Raw can deal with Crusade Avermax. The good thing is I'm preventing him from going into the Guardian Slime from the extra deck, which is actually quite nice for us. Gordian Slime is another card that, I don't know why this is the case, but whenever I say I want to pull a card, I will never ever pull it. Guardian Slime, um, is this Guardian Slime? Not Guardian Slime, God Slime, the one in the extra deck, is a card that I've been dying to pull. It's only an SR. We've pulled, there are SRs we pulled two of, there are SRs we pulled three of. There are so many SRs that we've pulled, and Guardian uh, God Slime is one that I've wanted to pull because I believe I have three copies, two or three copies of Metal Reflex Slime, and I would love to have that because I can turn a 3,000 defense monster into a 3,000 attack monster anytime I want to. They're going to activate Ancient Chant to add back the one from Graveyard. They can't summon it right now as far as I know. Uh, they're going to go to attack mode, which is actually kind of shocking. And they're going to go to end phase. He wants me to attack it. Trust me, I will attack it. I, I am not going to not attack it. Dark the Dark Charmer. Okay, that's good. Uh, what is preventing us from winning this game? Probably... Yeah, what is preventing us from winning this game? I don't think there's much preventing us from winning this game. I'm just going to think I'm just going to go to battle phase, actually. I mean, I could link these two away and then pop this column just to be safe. I probably should, right? Yeah, I think just to be safe, I am going to do that. So I'm going to link these two away. Oh, I just realized I can't even do that. All right, so we'll just put it here. And now we can do that. Okay, Reprodocus. Now there's three cards in this column. Uh, we can activate Tiamaton to pop this column. Because this is the only card I actually i am not sure what this is in over here. Uh, so yeah, now I'm going to summon this right here. And I'm going to pop this column. Because I don't know what this This could be another slime got, uh, metal reflex like call by the grave. Okay, that's fine. I did that up for nothing. He's going to call by the grave. Bistial Magnum, I imagine, probably. But there's only one anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what he... Bistial Magnum is limited to one, but it does not matter what he actually negates here. He's going to do transverse, so that's fine. Now we go to battle phase. I think these two can't attack, but this can attack, and that's what's important. And this is this is game on board here. 
Uh, yeah, these two cannot attack, but I have to be double sure. He can make himself gain defense, but he's in attack mode. So I don't even know what this guy was thinking really at the end there. Like if he wanted to end the game, he could have attacked me, but he just kind of left the monster. That was, that was a little odd. All right, we've got two legacy tickets and 10 gems. All right, so this is what our opponent was playing. He was playing a 60 card God deck. And if we're being honest here, his hand was actually really good. Like his hand was disgusting. Uh, turn one, he was able to turbo out. He only plays one copy of Winged Dragon of Raw in a Winged Dragon of Raw deck. That is just... Oh, but he's playing the other gods, of course. Uh, he was able to turbo out Winged Dragon of Raw and Mortal Phoenix, which is like the best of all of the god cards. He was actually... It actually had... You read this and you're like, wow, you can call that a god. Like, it's actually good enough to be called a god. It is the best of the god cards. Um, he was actually able to turbo it, out, turbo it out on turn one, despite having a 60 card deck. He's playing a lot of nonsense. Stuff that we play. Like, this card... I think we have this. It's in the Legacy Pack. Uh, like, he's got this. This is a very goofy, interesting build. And somehow, Dark Fusion. Why is this in here? One Fiend Monster from the Extra Deck using one. Blah, 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 blah. He's summoning this. Three level 10 monsters. Dark. Dark Fusion. That is hilarious. Okay. Well, this is, this is just funny. And somehow, again, 60 cards, all of that, and they still didn't break. All right, let's crack open this master pack. I'm very excited about what could be in here. Who knows? It could be anything. It could be really good cards. Uh, Orange Light is 800 attack, so I'm not going to play it. Dual Avatar, not going to happen. Cashtiera, don't have... Oh, literally, we have one Cashtiera. Not a bad card, just not really... This is our third copy. Uh, Ultimate Shield is... I mean, we don't have Utopia cards. If we did, that would be usable. Another Kafora Runner, I'm not unhappy about that. And Karakuri something... I don't think this is really usable, but I mean, it must attack. Select as an attack, change to defense, change to defense, and the battle phase. Yeah, so if this card attacks, it's changed to defense at the end of the battle phase. I mean, this is a normal summon that is 2100 attack. That's, that's decent, right? I think that's pretty good. I mean, it's a 21, but it's just, I don't really need that in any way. It's just a 2100 normal summon. This is good. Because uh, it adds to our Cosmo deck. The problem with the Cosmo deck is we don't have like the, we don't have like, the Farm Girl and stuff like that. We we don't have some of like the deck. Cosmos is a pretty low rarity deck, but we're missing just a few. Not even high rarity, like medium rarity cards, like Tin Can and Farm Girl and like stuff like that. I just need a few of those, and the deck would be a lot more playable. Because we don't have a lot of what are they call pilots. We don't have a lot of the pilots. We have some of the decent ships and we have some of the decent pilots, but we don't have enough. But honestly, a control Cosmo deck actually sounds like somewhat playable, honestly. Especially with the branded banishments that we have, all that other stuff. I actually think that much. this somebody once told me to play. Uh, he's like, well, it's got 3,000 defense. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Uh, this is decent, though. This is actually kind of cool. Uh, overall, it's an okay pack. All right, let's open these legacy tickets. Let's see what we've got here. Three legacy tickets. I said I was going to skip these, and I will. We're going to try it out this way. Okay, Photon Pulse Dragon. I used to use this in a combo a long time ago. I don't even remember what combo it was, but it was a level four, and it changes levels. Yeah, when this card is Synchro Summon, declare level one, two, three. It becomes uh, that level. Special Summon except for Synchro Monsters. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, I used it as a combo piece one time a long time ago. Uh, but I don't think it's actually usable other than weird combo pieces. Dark Blade, maybe in a warrior deck. Uh, already have this, not really usable. Uh, and then discard one card from your hand during your main phase. This card can attack twice the battle phase. It's 1300 attack. Who are you attacking, Bo? Uh, yeah, overall, I don't think there's anything play. Oh, and we got two more. Uh, inflict 400 damage for every, mo every monster they control. I mean, that can end games, but we now have that uh, corn chip, which can actually end games, so we don't need to do all of this funny business. Corn chip actually ends games. All you have to do is just summon corn chip and send a monster with less attack than the corn chip and it inflicts a thousand damage. So we da we actually do have the kind of like, oh no, the game's winding down, we gotta end it. Like, we do have that card now. Um, and then we've got this card, another burn card that we're probably never gonna use because it's a light swarm burn, burn card. Um, not the best pulls. All right, here we just won the coin flip. I'm going to, I guess the best thing I've got is Barrier Statue, Broken Line Pass. Realistically, it's the best thing we've got in this particular hand. Not the weakest hand, but certainly not the strongest. Really just depends on what deck he's playing. If he's got a normal summon that can beat this, we probably lose. 
But I guess we'll have to check it out. They're going to activate the Magician card. If they search Rod, this, this might be over for us, unfortunately. We didn't draw too much protection, but I guess we'll see. I don't know why he's already adding Dark Magician, but... Maybe he already has Rod, but in which case, why would you add Dark Magician anyway? Uh, he's got a 56-card deck. I This is going to be fun to check out afterwards. Perfect. He activated in the middle column. Please activate the effect. Yes. That's perfect, actually, because we have Broken Line, but he has to discard for cost anyway. He's going to discard the stone. I'm going to activate Broken Line. This will get destroyed. Now he doesn't have a monster to destroy our barrier statue with, and the stone will not trigger at the end phase. So we outed two cards with one card, plus we kept the barrier statue alive. The best thing that could have possibly happened. All right, end phase, beautiful. Now we can get another barrier statue in there. Familiar possessed, okay, can't really do anything with that right now. Yeah, at least we have two more turns of barrier statue. So we'll summon out the barrier statue and we'll just attack with what we have. Like I said, he's got at least two, unless he draws Raigeki, which is possible, you know, it's in the master pack. As we have learned. So Raigeki is in the master pack. End phase. We'll see. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what he's got here. A lot of these new... Remember Raigeki is in the solo mode. So you get it for free. This could end our reign of, 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 of power here. Alright. He's going to activate the souls. Well not the souls. Whatever this guy is. He's going to add rod. Which he should have done in the beginning. But I guess he didn't need to at the time. And now he gets to shuffle something back. But what's good is we do have ba two barrier statues, so we'll just be able to summon the familiar possessed attack over Rod. And then we have barrier statue, but if he just keeps that thing in his hand, he can, the, the ritual monster, he can just do this every single turn. So we really need to draw something to protect our barrier statue. Something like, uh, Dragoodies or something. Eternal Soul. It's cool that we have, uh, Dragoodies. Alright, he's gonna go to the battle phase. Obviously we are gonna lose one barrier statue, that's fine, we still got the other one. And uh, he still can't summon anything. He does have Eternal Soul, which is scary, but yeah, we just need to draw something here. That's something. That's like, that's exactly something. That's good. Okay, so now we summon out Lina. And we just go to battle phase, I believe, with Lina. But that doesn't do anything. I mean, it lets him set, but that doesn't matter. The good thing is we have the Paleozoic Dinomiscus that can destroy the board anytime. He's going to add Thousand Knives. Or Dark Magic Attack, I imagine. Oh, he actually plays Thousand Knives, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm not shocked. Why should we expect any less? We go to Battle Phase. Next turn, we can possibly make the Sioux Ship if we want to. Uh, and then Sioux Ship's very good because we can pop Eternal Soul and do a bunch of stuff. We also have Dino Mischief, which is nice. We're just going to pass here. And uh, what's good about what we have on the board right now, is we can use Dino Miscus to... Banish souls and souls will destroy any monsters he's got on board anyway, so that might be a better play than just It might be a better play than just doing Than just destroying banishing the monster that he's gonna use and he's gonna activate souls probably to get a dark magic attack again That's fine. I don't really care. He's gonna put a turn uh, dark magic circle on top He doesn't have I believe dark magician in graveyard, so it's not really a concern He can't really draw right now and he can't I mean, he can activate souls. He's going to summon Lord of D, or the... This guy, not Lord of D, the King of D. Not even the other one, the one that special summons. He's going to summon King of D. He's going to add Melody of Awakening Dragon, I believe. Or, yeah, he's going to add that, but he can't use it yet. I've never... This is like the anime of all anime decks. It's like the final boss of anime decks. He's got a Blue Eyes Dark Magician deck. This guy wakes up every single day to the Yu-Gi-Oh intro. I mean, he's got to. That's like his alarm in the morning. This guy loves season one. I've never seen anything quite like it. All right, he's gonna, yep, he's gonna search. I'm, I already thought I said okay to that. He just takes forever. He's gonna add blue eyes and alternative, unsurprisingly. Can summon alternative still, so it doesn't matter. So I'm cool with it. All right, end phase. He's not even gonna attack. <laughs> say no more. Yeah, say no more. That's cool with me. Oof, that's phenomenal. That is phenomenal. So everything that hits the graveyard is now banished. That's even better. I am going to summon out Run Ryu. We don't have game on board. We can go for Sioux Ship and then pop this. Like attack over this, pop this. We could do that. Yeah, I mean that's kind of still the same situation. Sioux Ship, yeah. That still would be the same situation. And this is more damage this way. 
I mean, we don't get to pop Eternal Soul, but honestly, Eternal Soul is like a nice little hostage we've got right now. Anyway, because we can get rid of Eternal Soul any moment we want to and then uh, destroy all of his monsters. So it might be actually more advantageous for us to keep the Eternal Soul on board anyway. So we'll just attack with all our monsters and then we'll pass. And he's down to 1600 life points. This should theoretically be game soon. Uh, unless he draws something really crazy. We've got so much good stuff. We have D Fissure, Barrier Statue, Paleozoic. These two aren't doing much right now, but... I mean, they're doing damage. That's that's important. He's going to summon Sage. I'm not afraid of Sage whatsoever because Sage is zero attack. So, by all means, please summon Sage. He's going to add Stone of Ancients. That's fine. This guy honestly should have already beaten it. Like, he should... I don't know if he should have beaten us, but he he should have played this out a lot better. Like, he should have just kept summoning rods. and But maybe he doesn't play enough rods. I, I don't know. So I guess we'll find out. We're just going to attack for game right now. We don't have any more goofiness to go on for. So let's just attack and end the game with the Lina. Yeah, I can't wait to check that deck out. That was like anime heaven. All right, we've got one legacy ticket. Only one. That's cool. We start the new season with three wins. That's pretty nice. Let's see our opponent's deck in here. They've got, like I said, super anime. I don't know how they, good thing we didn't pop anything. <laughs> waking the Dragons, two of Waking the Dragons. What is he summoning off the Waking the Dragons? Just the regular stuff he's got. He didn't even bother to, oh, Zark. Summoning Zark. Actually, it must be Fusion Summon, so not Zark. So I don't even know, how, how is he even summoning Zark on here? That's interesting. Okay, so he's, there's a lot of fun being had here. And that's what's important. All right, let's open up this pack. Let's see what's in here, right? Everyone's excited. I'm excited. So many. This is the first time in my life I can honestly say I'm excited for Familiar Possessed cards. Not playing that. That's actually from episode one. Kawaki Mary Ice. Uh, yeah, you have to reveal a continuous spell in your hand. So I guess that. Uh, destroy one special summon monster on the field. That's not even that bad. Send one card. But you have to reveal continuous spells. I mean, eh. Maybe not the best. Don't have enough cards for that. Don't have enough. Here comes the bulk. Uh, don't have that. Don't have that. I do have that. Okay, let me see this. So this card is actually not bad at all. Uh, we don't have Spiritual Earth. And we have a Possessed. We don't have any Possessed. Actually, we do have Possessed Spawn Trap cards. So this is actually not bad. I have to check how many Earth Monsters we have. But I might actually play this card. And the last card is Blue Ice Chaos Dragon. Yeah, I might actually play this card because it's not bad for our familiar Possessed Pile. Adds this Possessed Spawn Trap card. And this thing special summons itself from the deck, uh, from your hand or from the deck, which is a little weird, but it can do that. So any Earth plus, any Earth plus a Spellcaster, but I don't know how many Earths we have. If we had more Earths, then this would definitely be playable, but I really have to check how many Earths we have. All right, next up, we've got a Legacy Ticket. Let's just click Skip, like I said I would. And then we've got Zombie Tiger, which we have, and uh, another Gladiator Beast that we already have. All right, so I'm looking at our pile here. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of Earths. We have this, and we have Goblinburg, and that's pretty much it. We have two Earth Monsters in the entire deck. If we had more Earth Monsters, I would consider playing this, but unfortunately, we do not have a lot of Earth Monsters whatsoever. So I don't think that it is playable right now. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is, uh, it's cool. It's Kashtira Ogre plus Time Thief, which is nice. So we're going to go ahead and Kashtira Ogre. Special summon that out. Uh, we're going to normal summon out Purple Poison. Uh, we're going to special summon out the Nefariousness. Actually, funny enough, if I had played that new card, we could have special summoned it right now by tributing these two. Then I'd be able to special summon this back, which would have been nice, but... Uh, yeah, it would have been nice, but we just... Yeah, there's not enough Earths in our deck right now. If I pull more of the Spellcaster Earth Monster, I think it might be kind of cool. So we have Time Thief plus Kashtir Ogre, which is a pretty deadly combo. And then we'll set these two and we'll just pass. And hopefully that is, I didn't mean to do that, but whatever. Hopefully that is enough. We've got, like I said, Kashtir Ogre, Time Thief, Memory Loss, and Dimension Prison. So not bad, not the worst, not the best. But definitely very, very playable. And we'll see what we are able to do with the cards that our opponent has. They are playing a weird deck. I just looked at their extra deck and stuff. Three cards in the extra deck. Uh, what was that? 47 plus 6. And then we got a Gravekeeper off the top. Which Gravekeepers do not affect our deck at all. So I don't care that he has Gravekeepers. Because Necro Valley does pretty much nothing to us. 
Um, I'm, I'm perfectly cool with it. They can go ahead and do that. I'm going to be able to use Kashdira Ogre to banish something off the top. And I'm going to go, yep, use that effect. Uh, now, the only thing is, I probably maybe did it a little too early, but that's fine. I'm still going to be able to banish something. Yeah, this guy's playing super pure. He's got all monsters coming up, so I want him to actually move things around. Uh, this thing prevents things from... This thing stops graveyard effects. Uh, this one summons. This one summons from the graveyard. These two. And then these two kind of suck. I would say I'm going to banish this because I'm hoping that he's only playing one of it, so he won't have access to it. Uh, but the rest is fine. Necro Valley, cool. He's going to activate Necro Valley. Nothing I can do there. I'm just going to go into Spiritualist, which is the Fusion Summon card. It's fine with us. Nothing we can really do there. Uh, the one from the extra deck is pretty good because it prevents... Actually, we can just negate that. And I just realized we could just negate that and then prevent the... The one from the extra gift's protection to itself plus the necro valley so we could just negate that effect and then just attack over it next turn and then he won't be able to fuse plus he already wasted his normal summon and i think that's pretty decent it's great when i actually get to play against decks that i like know myself because then i know what to negate and he scoops yeah i just know what to negate it's great it's so much better than having to play against like, like witchcrafter and i'm like oh, i don't know where do i negate it where do i stop it uh, all right so yep we just won that one easy all right we ranked up let's see we ranked up okay we got 100 gems nice we got a legacy ticket and another copy of the dancing fairy here's the post game coverage this is what our opponent was playing they've got a royal rare quaking mirror force that's a beautiful card but this is what our opponent was playing they're playing pretty much gravekeepers with gravekeepers trap and they've got the exchange of spirit and all of this stuff uh i think this is a really cool deck but the ratios are horrific in this deck. I'm going to be honest with you. These are some terrible ratios. But it's a fun deck. All right, Master Pack time. Let's see what we get. It's glowing, guys. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. Hopefully we get something good. More familiar present. Royal. Uh, not Royal, whatever that is. Uh, Fire King Island, a little early. Don't have the rest of the support. I got to pull the Hidden Arsenal bulk every time. Pendulum Storm, can't use that. Avion, pretty cool. Another copy of this. This is actually a good card. Um, this is a fire formation card. Cool. Grave Squirmer. I don't think we can really destroy that battle target card on the field. Destroy it. It's not a bad card, actually. But again, it's just uh, a little bit. I don't know why it's not a zombie, but it's it's a little bit of a slowish card. Uh, we've they're all all of these cards are actually not bad. The Shining Dude is not bad. This is not bad. Fire King Island. Don't have enough Fire Kings. All right. What you are? Are we gonna pull? Let's see. We've got Necro. No way. Right after the duel. Where we dueled against Necro Valley, we get a Necro Valley. It's incredible. That's like, it's like scripted. You can't make this stuff up. I, I'm i in shock. I can't believe we just pulled that. That's crazy. We, we just dueled this. And it's one of this is one of the best Floodgate Field spells of all time. I can't believe we just pulled that. That is so good. How, who is this good against? You know who this is good against? Fire King. You know who this is good against? Labyrinth. Uh, are we still going to be able to beat Labyrinth? Probably not. Uh, but that's a, that's an amazing pull. That is definitely going into the deck. One million percent. I don't know why I keep getting... I, there's three things I don't like in Yu-Gi-Oh. Familiar Possessed. One of my least favorite decks ever. We got... This is probably pretty much what we're playing. Floodgates. Every time we get a Floodgate. And then Pendulums. I've never read a Pendulum in my life. And we keep pulling Pendulums. So Necro Valley, another Floodgate to add. Probably one of the best Floodgates we've got. It's just a very going first Floodgate. But we'll see. We're, we're going to make things happen. All right. Next up, Legacy Ticket. Let's open this up. As always, I'm just going to skip it now. I do skip them now. It's so much faster. We've got Brave Freed the, uh, Freed the Brave Wander is a decent card. And Gem Knight Garnet, which is... I mean, this is probably going in our normal monster deck. It is 1900 attack and uh decent typing right it's an earth all right time to figure out what to cut uh we've got royal prison is pretty much necro valley but like not as good because it only stops i mean the cool thing about royal prison is it can make things fizzle uh but definitely i want to put in royal i actually i know what to take out i'm going to take out backup squad that card has come up one singular time ever and it hasn't come up since um, it's like a decent card, but like, I'm not joking with you. It literally came up one time again in one duel. Most of the time I, f I activate that card and people just, uh, they don't negate it, but I usually activate that card and people will just, uh, they'll just pop it before they even ever attack me 
or they just put game on board and then they attack me and it's like i draw into hand traps so that, that card is a little might be a little bit too slow i think it literally has only ever come up one time whereas necro valley is i imagine probably going to come up a whole lot more plus our deck does not summon things back from the grave i don't have any effects here that's summoned back from the graveyard not one except uh the only thing it messes with is bestial magnum that's it it doesn't mess with anything else everything else here doesn't interact in any negative fashion whatsoever with Necro Valley. I'm looking at it just to double confirm it. Yeah, I don't think so. Necro Valley stops. He does first effect and second effect. It stops the second effect of Apprentice. It stops nothing else. I don't. I don't think it stops any other effect here. I think everything else is pretty much good. And then it stops. Yeah, it just it, that's the only effect that stops is is Bestial Magnum. So as long as we don't have Bestial Magnum on the field, we're good to go. All right, we lost the coin flip. Our hand's looking not too shabby, honestly. We've got Crackdown, Grand Horn. Grand Horn's more of a going first card, but Grand Horn, Crackdown, Small World, Forbidden Chalice. Our opponent is playing Fire, not Fire Kings. They're playing uh, Super Heavy Samurai, so this is going to be interesting for sure. I want to see how far they get. In theory, we shouldn't win. Now they're playing Valiance. Actually, that might be even even worse because valiance is like a really annoying deck to play against because they put the fossil dino on the field and nothing good ever happens when you see a valiance card our opponent continues to go off here they've gone into electromite uh, this is not looking winnable but again we'll check our hand is decent we've got forbidden chalice crackdown stuff like that so it's it's it, it may end not so badly for us we'll, we'll have to see all right, so our opponent's going off non-stop here. They've already gotten to Beyond Pendulum, Borload. Uh, yeah, Borload Savage. Pendulums are just kind of outrageous. If you don't have a hand trap and they just start going off... Honestly, one hand trap wouldn't have stopped any of this anyway, so I'd need at least two hand traps to have stopped all of this regardless. Uh, but right now, the board doesn't look that imposing. It's just, as far as I can see, just a Borload nothing really else and as long as it's just bore load i think we can still beat it this is another one of those situations where grand horn of heaven again as, as good as it seems it's actually as good as a grand horn of heaven would have seemed the problem with grand horn of heaven is like w once they establish their board like what in the world is that going to actually do yeah now there's some ip this is looking rough this might end our win streak it's sad but it might we're on a we have a four game win streak in in the new season. He's already using IP. Didn't even wait for my turn. Crusadia, Avermax, IP. How do I out that? I I don't think I, I do out that. We'll see though. Alright, let's see what we've got here. There can only be one does not out anything on this board because you've got a spellcaster, dragon, cybers. How do I out a Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax? With one monster, I can't. I can out it with Dragoodies, but I only have one monster. That sucks. Yeah, I only have one monster. If I had more monsters, I could out it, but I don't. I have one singular monster. Yeah, literally, uh, one. Yeah, if I had Dragood, if I had one other monster, no matter what it is, I could have done this. All right, I think we're gonna small world into something. I guess we'll see. If they have an Ash Blossom. They can always Ash it too. They are going to ash it. That's good. Sometimes uh, when we get ashed, it prevents me from having to think. So that's good enough for me. Now we're going to get our monster negated. And now we just set everything in pass. I think we just set everything in pass. That's our best thing we've got right now. Uh, do we summon this dude? Honestly, think we just save him because... I blocks one attack. We'll summon him. All right, so we'll just summon this dude out. We'll see what our opponent does. Crusader Avermax, like I said, for our, our deck is really toughed out because can be targeted, can be destroyed by card effects because it's summoned off of IP and it shuffles a card away. So it can be a little bit rough. We need something, something to out it, something special. Place when Valiant's monster. That's fine. Whatever. All the Valiance monsters are spellcasters, right? Yep, so we have there can only be one for them. And then he's got a dragon and the cybers. 
Now he's gonna pendulum summon, that's fine. I actually want him to pendulum summon a bunch of valiance cards because then I'll flip. Uh, there can only be one. Yeah, I'll flip. There can only be one right. Actually, I can Grand Horn of Heaven that whole summon. I mean, that, I don't know what else he's going to summon, so I'm just going to do that. That's not that's not actually too bad. So we'll just negate that whole summon. They go to Graveyard, they draw, and now they're in the battle phase. Yep, now they're stuck in the battle phase. We're gonna, definitely going to take some damage here. For sure, I don't think there's much that we can do about this. We're going to take some damage. Yeah, he's going to attack over that. That's fine. Save ourselves some life points. I can make him destroy his own Borlote Savage, which I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and crack down, targeting Borlote Savage. And he's going to activate it to negate, obviously. Then we're going to chain our Forbidden Chalice to negate the Borlote Savage. And we're going to take it. And uh, our opponent is going to out his own monster for us, which is great. The thing falls off, he's going to get negated, this resolves, and we take Borlote Savage. Now he's forced to out his own monster for us, which is nice. We are going to take 3,000 still, but nope, I guess never mind. He doesn't want to out his own monster. Good enough, right? Good enough. Uh, let's see, I don't, I don't know how to out this though, seriously. I really don't. I really don't know how to out it. Small world, he's going to also small world, okay. That's fine. He's going to reveal ghost bell to get into something. Maxi, the bridge, so he's going to get to something else. He's going to search that buster dude, which is fine actually. Uh, because we've got there can only be one, two. If he normal summons that, I'm just going to there can only be one. Okay, yep, there can only be one immediately on normal summon. Actually, what? that's a machine, of course. Machine spellcaster, of course. Uh, Tiamaton. My column placement is not optimal. And there can only be one is actually preventing me from doing anything. This can't be destroyed by card effects anyway. I think we just change this to defense and pass here. Yeah, we just pass. We go to end phase. We do have Tiamaton live once Borlode Savage leaves the field. Yeah, for a second there, I thought all Valiants were Spellcasters, but he summoned the Valiant that is a machine. So it's going to activate the this girl right here to do something. I don't know what she did. It's going to go to Battle Phase, fine with me. It's going to gain attack, that's cool. Fortunately, like I said, the Column Placement is not optimal right now. We need to draw a Spell Card or something. Or a Monster, it's fine if we draw a Monster, but we need to figure something out here. End Phase... End phase, let's see. Okay, let me see if I can get something in the extra deck here. Oh, man. I mean, Time Thief can potentially get us a monster that can out this board. I mean, if we get a trap, we can out this dude right here. If we get a trap card off of Time Thief. I'm Looking at it, I think that might be the only thing that we actually have available to us. Unfortunately, a Transverser can't help us because... We can't point right there. I mean, if we had four monsters, we could definitely do it, actually. Actually, no, we couldn't because we can't put a monster here. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think our best bet is to hope to get a trap card off of Time Thief. That's, like, our best bet right now. So I'm going to activate this effect to special summon this here. And now we can activate Tiamaton. Activate him. This can't be destroyed by card effects. So there's no point to even do it. We're just going to summon it right here. Might as well destroy something. And we go into Time Thief. Again, I believe Time Thief because the other cards just don't do anything for us. So we go Time Thief. And we hope to God we get a trap card off the top of his deck. Because if we get a trap card, we have a chance at winning this duel. If we get a monster, we pretty much cannot win this duel. So... We go to battle phase. Oh yeah, I can't only attack um, this dude anyway. We go to end phase. Okay, hope to get a trap card. Trap card it is. I mean trap card or spell card because we couldn't survive these two attacks. So it's fine. We're going to activate this. If it's a spell card, at least we get to draw and stuff. So we're going to activate. We get a monster pendulum. 
We need to get like an Imperm. Hopefully we get an Imperm. I don't even know if he plays any trap cards. But it's a spell card, card or a monster would be optimal. He's going to activate a field spell. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Um, he's going to activate this effect. Negate its effects. Uh, I'm just going to activate Time Thief Redoer to get itself out of the way. If he has an Ash, kind of cooks me. But no, he doesn't have an Ash. That's good. Uh, we detach one of the monsters, doesn't matter who, because they're all leaving the field anyway. And then this doesn't res I mean, it can flip coins, but it doesn't matter because it's not resolving because the target's not on the field. And now, move that so you can move his own column. Right now, he has 41 damage on the field. So if he can get 2,000 more, we're, we're done. All right, he got a... Oh, he flip got our monster back. I think that just wrapped up the duel there. Triple tactics that that wrapped up the duel. I think I think it's over. There's nothing we can. He's gonna draw cards. He's gonna pendulum summon. I think we lost that duel. There's nothing. There's nothing more we can do there. All right. So here is our hand. We just won the coin flip. It's actually a really really good hand. Like really good. Very happy with it. I'm gonna cash deer ogre summon it out here. Way in attack mode. Great card actually. Like. I would build a deck around Kashdira low rarity cards if I could, but I can't. Broken line down the middle, of course. Solemn Judgment and Memory Loss. Great hand. I'm very happy with it. I I can't say anything. What are these like? What are these Doom Buckets over here? What is going on with our... With our what, where are these from? Is this from Yu-Gi-Oh? I don't even know where these are from. What deck is that from? I've never seen anything quite like it. And they scoop it up. Look at that. Easy win. That was a very hard game previously, and this one was extremely easy. We've got three legacy tickets. We didn't do shit. We just we just summoned some monsters and ended. Out of curiosity, this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing Resonators. I can un I can understand why they scooped. They're playing Resonators of the Bestial Lubellion, 60 card. This is a completely competent and good deck. And uh, in theory, I don't know why they're playing this though. Synchro Zone. I don't know why they're playing that. But this deck, in theory, would have would have beaten would have beaten us if they had gone. All right, let's open this. We got a master pack. Let's open it. Exciting. Always exciting. Because there's always random rares I've never heard of that I can definitely use. I don't think. Special summon wing. Tri-brigade. Yeah, can't do it. Tri-brigade card. Uh, that card's not good. Uh, this card's not good. Uh, Gaga -ga Mancer. Uh, unfortunately, this is locks you into Gaga -ga card, so we can't use it. Uh, Vo Infernoid card. Can't use that. Salamanger, Jack Jaguar, another copy. Uh, Heroic Challenger, Warhammer, I've never seen or heard of this card, but that's fine, can't really use it. Another copy of Enlightenment Paladin, not a bad card, just not really usable anymore for us, but it's not a bad card by any means. Um, and then Jack Jaguar is not bad, because it adds to our Salamangre pile, and this is actually one of the better Salamangre cards, so I'm glad to have that, glad to add that to the uh, collection, because we have actually, we have a decent Salamangre pile of cards, we just don't have any of the Link Monsters. I think when we get the Link Monsters, we can start doing something with Salamangrates. But right now, we just we have, I think, multiple wills of the Salamangrates. I, we, I think we have Salamangrate, the search spell for Salamangrates, um, the circle. I, but I think what we're missing is any Link. Like We have nothing in terms of Links, so we can't do anything with them other than special summon them and then lock ourselves with different cards. Uh, but maybe one day. All right, here we go. We got a Legacy, three Legacy tickets. I'm just going to skip them, like I said. Uh, here's what we've got. Pendulum Area. This card isn't a bad, like, floodgate -y effect for Pendulums. Now we've got the ultimate combination, both Pendulums and Floodgates. Uh, here we've got this card. This card sent to the graveyard. Draw a card. Ah. Yeah, this card's not that great. Uh, insect, not really usable for us. The Ritual for Zor Zork. Can't really use that. Bubble Illusion, not really a great card. Plus, we don't have Bubble Man. Uh, when you take 2,000 or more damage, gain 4,000 first. I mean, it's okay. So, overall, these these were not that great. Pendulum Area is actually not bad for a Pendulum deck. Uh, but it has to go first. It can't really do a second. But it is cool because for the rest of the turn, uh, neither player can Special Summon except Pendulums. Which is good against non-Pendulum decks, actually. If you're going... Again, if you're going first with Pendulums, it's actually not a bad card to use. It basically locks your opponent out of playing the game, which is what the game... It's what Yu-Gi-Oh! has become, is locking your opponent out of the game. 
All right, we just won the coin flip. Hands looking pretty, pretty solid, honestly. We've got Rochka and Kashtira Ogre, which is nice. So we're gonna special summon out the Kashtira Ogre. Not that Rochka and Kashtira Ogre are any kind of a combo, but we're gonna summon out Rochka. Uh, activate its effect for sure. Get a free card if we can. Hopefully we get a you know something nice. Now we're gonna get Ashed, so that's that's out the window. Uh, nope, we don't want to use that in response, but. We have Tiamaton possibly next turn. We'll see what our opponent summons. So we actually will activate the Ogre. We'll see what we banish off the top of our opponent's deck. Yes, five cards. Star is not a bad banish. Bonfire is not a bad banish. Ah, we lost this duel for sure. <laughs> this awesome ass group of cards. Uh, Star we can banish. Bonfire is going to come up soon. They play multiple copies of Flam Flame Burge. Sometimes they play one. I'm going to hope and pray that they're only playing one copy of this. I'm going to banish it. And hopefully that ends well for us. But sometimes they play multiples. We'll see. I've seen builds that play only one. Uh, I think most builds play two. But hopefully banishing that will be the best possible scenario. Because they have the search spell for Diabellstar anyway. So I don't see really the point of banishing that. Uh, they're going to Diabellstar probably for Diabellstar. Yeah, so banishing the Diabellstar wouldn't have meant anything anyway. And then they're going to uh, move their deck around. Actually, we can Forbidden Chalice them. Then they get over our Kashtira Ogre. But we can... Pot let's just let's just do this and then see how far we can prevent things. We'll go ahead and negate that. Because sometimes you negate like the right... You negate something early in the combo and your opponent just has nothing left. And in those cases, it can actually be quite good. But we'll see if they have other Snake Eye cards. We're going to activate Ogre again. I'm going to excavate five. Didn't we just use this effect? Oh, no, that was the last turn. So we're going to excavate five, and then we're going to banish one. Mad bonfires, man. I mean, I guess we banish bonfire because he gets them to the rest of their engine. Bonfire was just... Not, oh, man. I should have saved it for this. Yeah, I should have saved it for this, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter what direction you go because now they've got the sinful spoils package. Once once that hit the field, this, this duel's... This deal's pretty much over. We have nothing. We have nothing really left that we can. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. Why waste the time, right? All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our hand is not looking too shabby, honestly. We've got Kashtira Ogre and Royal Prison, Crackdown, Forbidden Chalice, Nahata. Crackdown, I don't mind going second. It's actually still pretty good going second card. Same with Forbidden Chalice. Royal Prison, on the other hand, is a little better. Well, not a little. It's a lot better going first. Going second is a little bit too late. Same thing with Necro Valley, actually. It's always been the problem with Necro Valley. It's it's tough going second with Grave Keepers because your opponent's already done so much, so activating Necro Valley isn't going to do much for you. But Kashtir Ogre is nice to see going second. Them, I guess Nahata and Kashtir Ogre, unfortunately, oof, this is really good to see. I don't know what our opponent's playing, but I, I'm i glad I see what I see. We'll say that. Lightning Vortex, we'll save it. So we'll just Kashtir Ogre out. Uh, we'll save the Nahata in hand for later. So we'll go ahead and summon out the Kashtira Ogre. We will definitely save that Nahata in the, in the Vortex. It's going to Chaos Trap Hole. Yeah, he's going to shuffle our monster into the deck. And then they lose a thousand for each monster returned. I not, can't really do anything about that, unfortunately. So they lose a thousand. And... We can Lightning Vortex here, but I don't think that's worth it. I think we just set multiple cards in pass. But they do have Breaker, so... We might just straight up pass. I think we... Yeah, we set a few cards and we pass. I think that's what we do. Set three and pass on that. I think that should be good enough. It sucks that we lost the Kashtir Ogre, but... It sucks. Nothing we can do about that. I mean, who would have saw that space trap hole or whatever? So he's going to be able to pop one random card. We'll see which one it is. It's the Crackdown. I don't want to lose that one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and Forbidden Chalice this. I'm going to take a little more damage, but I want to, I want to save that Crackdown uh, for later. I just think it's a good... I was hoping he would he would target the middle column card, uh, Royal Prison, because I don't know how much he's going to be special summoning from the graveyard with this deck. Maybe a lot. Uh, maybe a lot. Okay. 
maybe a lot we'll see okay we're gonna put chaining on and we're gonna hopefully we, that card exactly gets hit nope so that's unfortunate for us if this card got hit it would have been awesome because then we could have royal prisoned and prevented any more of this foolishness i don't know what our opponent's playing here but we'll see yeah i don't know what they're playing here increase its level he's gonna increase a monster's level I could just, I was going to steal this, but I could just steal the next monster that he summons, so I don't need to steal this. Yeah, whatever he summons, I don't know what he's going to summon here. Probably a, a Synchro 7. And we're going to steal the Adagnister Pegasus, okay. I can't allow this to resolve, because I can't allow this to stay on field, because he can destroy spawn trap cards, non-targeting. So I'm going to go ahead and crack down this before it's too late. And we'll put it right here. This card is actually really good, too. Like really good. Um, the Adagnister Pegasus. And it has a really good graveyard effect, too. So that's really bad for us. But, I mean, we've got to find a way to do some stuff here. Which of the Black Forest doesn't do anything right now other than exist. I really don't want to use Lightning Vort I mean, yeah, Lightning Vortex. I really don't want to use it, but I might actually have to. We can get to a Link 2 for sure. That's what we do. We get to a Link 2. So we're going to Normal Summon out Witch of the Black Forest. We're going to Link away Witch of the Black Forest into an Artemis. Yeah, we're going to Summon out Artemis. And then we're going to activate the effect of Witch of the Black Forest. We're going to Search. We have a lot of options here, but I think we go into one of the little monsters that Special Summon themselves. So we'll go into an Ari Fire. And now we Special Summon this out. And now we special summon out. We can go Hita, actually. Does he have any fires? Please have a fire. Nope, no fires. Hita wouldn't have been too bad, but I don't think it's useful. Hita's not bad, but I think we go into Code Virus Dragon just because it has more attack. And the reason I'm not linking away Pegasus is because Pegasus has a really good graveyard effect, so I don't want to link it away. We'll go into Code Virus. We'll go to Battle Phase. And we'll just attack. Probably Hita wouldn't have been too bad, too, because Hita gives us... A little bit of recursion, but this guy's a lot, like a decently, a decent amount stronger than Hita, so I'll go with this. This guy's got a weird deck. I don't know what he's really playing. Uh, he might be a masochist. I don't know, but if he is a masochist, he's one lucky masochist. He's got Pot of Extravagance. He got Small World like us. It's gonna end phase. Okay, cool. Um, it's gonna go to end phase. We can actually special summon Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax. Damn it! I just used this stupid. Artemis, I have no way to get it back. I guess we just normal summon this out. And just start attacking. We can go into Crusadia Avermax too. Yeah, we can go into Crusadia Avermax for sure. But right now that's not what does this do? How do we how does this uh target one card your opponent control shuffle into the deck? Okay. So I think Crusadia Avermax would actually be fine if we summoned it. So we'll attack. Crusader Avermax, if this guy is playing a Massacre's deck, is very tough to out for Massacre's decks. So I might just go ahead and go with that. So I'll go main phase two. But then again, holding his mind. Yeah, I'm, I have to do the smart play. I have to do the smart play. Oh my god, I could have gone into Brutal Sword. I, but I don't, I don't have game on board anyway. I don't have another monster spot summon. I was going to say I could have OTK'd him, but I couldn't. Uh, I'm wrong. Reaper Docus. I think we just go one and two. Yeah, we go 1 and 2 Re Re Reaper Docus. And then we go into Crusader Aramax with what's left. And that is, if he is playing a Massacre's deck, a very tough card to out. I know because it's been tough to out for me. So I'm going to go Crusader Aramax. Can't be targeted. And we just pass here. I think that is the best thing we've got. And if he's got, if he special summons a monster, we can just attack over it and win for game. And if he doesn't special summon, then we just attack over the monster. But I think that's probably a, a smarter thing that for us to do. All right, he's going to act, summon Dogmatica Maximus. Okay, he's going to special summon that. He's going to banish out the banish the Wind Pegasus, which I'm cool with because now I don't have to worry about that. We can both send monsters from our extra deck uh, using Dogmatic Maximus's effect. Oh no, here we go. He's going to send Garura. 
and Skull Knight. He's going to draw and he's going to target a monster, destroy it. He can do either one of those effects. I don't even know what to send. I'm probably just going to send Hida and the Witch, and that should be good enough. So I'll just send those two. Even though I could have sent other stuff, but he's going to be able to draw. He Maybe he's not playing a Masochist deck now that I think about it, because... I mean, no, it's possible. It's possible he he pulled this stuff. He's either got a weird deck, or he just he is a masochist, or maybe he just got a weird deck. All right, he's gonna set a monster. I was gonna say we can just attack for game, but unfortunately he did set that monster too. We got to get rid of this Dogmatica monster 100%. So we'll summon out first of all this magician, and then we'll activate this effect to set one from the deck. Yeah, this dude's not not too bad, the Sun Magician, because he gets us free advantage, essentially, so we can summon, it doesn't matter who, dark, light, it doesn't matter, but we summon a free monster out. And then, we can Lightning Vortex this, and attack, hope it doesn't have a lot of attack, and then uh, win the game, hopefully, but I think the smarter play is to save the Lightning Vortex, so we're going to go to Battle Phase, attack over the face-down monster, because again, I just want to try to play it out smart. I don't want to over overcommit to anything. Yeah, that would have been game if I had done that. So we're just going to attack over this, attack over this, and we have one more turn. Hopefully we have one more turn. I still don't know what he's got back there. Uh, I'm going to activate Crusadia Mech Knight, gain attack, and then main phase two and end phase. I would have, yeah, like I said, I would have won there if I had used the Lightning Vortex, but again, I, I just got to play it a little safe. I don't want to give up too much resources, and then that ends up being like a storming mirror force, and we lose everything and uh, end up losing the duel so right now he can't even attack this which is really cool he can't attack this he has to attack this can't be targeted all of the various protection yet yeah, ended up being a f well, actually that would have saved them right yeah special summon that would have saved them no matter what so it's actually a good thing that i did that so he's going to summon that he's going to activate danger thunderbird that is fine with me he's going to discard armed sage okay Summon out the Thunderbird. It's cool with me. He's going to activate Reasoning. It's got all different levels, so I'm just going to pick... I mean, based on his graveyard, it, again, he has all different levels, but the most common level, I would say, is probably level 4. So we're hoping it's a level 4, but it could honestly be just about anything. Yeah, this guy's got... I, I want to say it's a Masochist deck, or this guy just is... Okay, so it is. A, we got lucky. It is a monster. That is a level 4. So we got lucky on that. He's got a lot of interesting cards here. And then he's got another copy. Of, we've got three copies of this card too, actually. We've got a lot of interesting cards, as we can see here. He's going to go into the corn ship. That does target, so that's fine. Detach. He can target the Edda. Uh, I don't really have a reason to activate its effect to flip this face up. That doesn't really accomplish anything. So I just guess we lose our monster. We lose a thousand life points. And he's gonna link one away, or oh, okay, with the, into this thing. That's fine. And end phase. Okay, now I feel very comfortable activating the lightning vortex and going for game if I can. Tiamaton's pretty good too. Tiamaton's definitely pretty good, but I think we just lightning vortex and hopefully just win the game. This can be destroyed by card effects, right? Oh my god. Oh yeah, okay, 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 that's fine. If this card's destroyed by card effects, you can special summon one level 5 or lower monster from your grave at special summon. And that's cool because we have um, we have a royal person, so... We kind of have checkmate on the game here, so he's going to activate that right now, and I'm going to chain royal prison. And uh, yes, he's going to target something, and like I said, it's, it's checkmate. We're going to activate the royal prison, and we're going to stop it from happening. Yep, he's going to target that. We're going to activate Royal Prison. Beautiful. Just thank God I kept this in the deck. And we're going to prevent that from happening. And he's going to scoop it up. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I want to say that was a masochist. But I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I mean, he's got Simo in his name. So I imagine it's probably a masochist. Uh, we've got two legacy tickets. All right, this is what our opponent was playing. I want to say it's a masochist, but this is a lucky masochist. I mean, he's got a lot of good cards. He's got Tsuchinoko, Evil Swarm, two Tiamatons. That's awesome. Where do you acquire Tiamaton? I, I, it doesn't say. Uh, I'm actually curious because 
I, I want to get another one, and we haven't. This guy's good. We play, we used to play him here and there. We've got other dangers. Light and Darkness Dragon is an awesome card. This is a Masochist. Lovely Labyrinth. I don't really know how you summon this in this deck. I guess maybe just Tribute Summon it. Gold Pride. Okay. Maybe this is a free Special Summon. If your life points are lower, yeah, you Special Summon it. You're a Masochist. Your life points are always lower. But this is like a dream card for me. I've always wanted to pull the Reasoning. Uh, but I don't think, like I said, uh, if, if I want to pull it, I'll, I'll never pull it. Kaiser Coliseum. This is another dream card. Still haven't uh, pulled it yet. Storming, exactly. This is what I was talking about. This is exactly what I was talking about. If he has Storming, we lose the game. That's why I didn't want to overextend too much um, and give up the Lightning Vortex yet. But this is actually an awesome deck. This definitely it is a cool synergy to it, too, because he's got the Maximus. And the Maximus, he can send Fossil Knight and Garura. And then he's got all of this. And then he's got the Wind Pegasus. Like, this guy actually has some really awesome pulls. His extra deck is incredible, actually. It's really good. And then he's got the Raid Raptor. And he's got Nightmare Phoenix. Firewall we also have. This is actually a, probably the best Masochist, I believe, that we... Actually, no, there was that one Masochist that we played against. But he, like, threw the game against us. He probably could have been... He probably, I don't know, I don't remember if he was better than this or not, but I, this is a very good Masochist deck. Like, this is really one of the better ones we've ever played against. Very good pulls. Um, kind of shocking. And you got Dogmatic of Punishment, too. All right, let's open this one up. We've got a Hollow, potentially, or a new card. Uh, we'll see. It's either a Hollow or a new card. We get gypped sometimes. We've got UA Locker Room. A UA FA card. I don't think we're ever going to pull this, so it's not going to happen. Junk Blader. Uh, we got to pull the bulk. Got to pull it. Uh, banish one junk. This guy gains eight. Yeah, it's not really that good. Uh, already have that. Uh, that's for Galaxy Eyes. Never going to play Ghost Drake. Spiral Fusion. Don't have enough of the stuff to play it. And Condemn Witch is a great card. And wow, I might actually play this. Uh, and this card is... Yeah, I might actually play this. Because when this card is normal, summon add a forbidden quick play from your deck to your hand. And then we can special summon a fairy during our opponent's turn. Which if we had like a light barrier statue, that would be perfect. Because the light barrier statue is a level 4 fairy. We could have summoned that. Uh, but yeah, this search is forbidden chalice. And that's pretty good. I mean, the only issue with this card is it's not a spellcaster. So it doesn't interact with all the other spellcaster stuff. But as far as it is, it's a pretty good... It's a plus 1 on summon, which is really good for us. And then for our super rare, we've got a heretic sky dragon which is a rank eight that uh we cannot use unfortunately we cannot use this card yet but condemn which is actually a good pull. again if this just was not a if only this was a spellcaster but it's not all right let's open up these legacy tickets we'll see what we get here we've got two legacy tickets i'm going to skip we've got detonate the leader okay so overall this card is actually not bad for a link three i wish it was generic but it's not and it's cybers if it was generic i would run this if it battles anything that is not a length three or higher monster, it just destroys it. Good non-target. That's already good. And once per turn, tribute one monster. This card points to target one monster. One monster your opponent controls destroy it. This card is all around really, really good. But again, I just it's just cyber specific. So we do have that pile. We have a lot of a big pile of uh, Salmangri cards that I was just talking about, and they're all Cybers, obviously. Then we also have some Cybers cards that are decent, so this might actually work in there. It's really not a bad card at all. Thousand Dragon I can't use. Uh, Ground Attacker, Burgot we can't use, and uh, Seed Cannon is a plant card, so we just can't use this, but it's not, this is not a bad card whatsoever. It's actually, I would even argue this is a good card this is this is leaning more toward this is better than deco talker i just wish it was generic like if, if yeah this is better than deco talker it's just not generic and that's the issue with it all right we just won the coin flip our hand is solid this is like this is like floodgate city right now so this hand is very very good tin goldfish barrier royal prison there can only be one crackdown this is, they need Raigeki and Harpy's Feather Duster to stop us. All right, let's start this off. We're going to normal summon 10 goldfish. Why not? We're going to summon it, activate its effect, get the barrier statue out. Hopefully, he doesn't have a response, but we're going to summon that out. And I think we just set three and pass crackdown, royal prison, and these pretty good hand. I mean, that was a little bit dumb too. He could have just impermed our 10 goldfish or. or Veilered or tin goldfish, in which case we would have 
It'd been okay still, because there can only be one in Crackdown or Royal Prison, so it wouldn't have been the end of the world, actually. But we'll see what he's got. He's gonna go straight to end phase, good enough for me. And that is phenomenal. He's gonna go to end phase, another barrier statue. It's like super barrier statue day today. As long as we keep drawing this, we can... I just, uh... Yeah, as long as we keep drawing it, I think we could just keep winning. We're gonna go to battle phase, attack, attack, attack. Barrier statue might have stopped them there. Because obviously barrier statue is not easy to play through for anybody. If you're not playing a fire deck, right? But if you're playing another deck... One deck I haven't been seeing a lot of is Volcanic. You know, it, it came out, and I, was, I would imagine even just any new deck usually gets some playing, some, like, play from it, because it's a new deck, right? It, people are excited to play it, but no one's been playing Volcanic whatsoever. I've never ran into it yet. All right, they're going to end their turn again. That is fine with me. I guess they just don't have a, uh, a useful hand here. they stamping destruction, so they might be playing the starter deck. Forbidden Chalice does nothing right now. Except boost our attack a little bit. Alright, we did some good damage here. Another solid 28. I think we just set the Forbidden Chalice face down. And we just pass on this and wait for our opponent. We have so many like interruptions, but they're just not doing anything. We have Floodgates and Interruptions and so much stuff. They're just not accomplishing anything other than drawing and passing right now. Alright, and we won that game. Our opponent just absolutely did nothing all of those games they just kind of sat there and looked at this board and uh yeah they didn't accomplish anything at all we've got one two legacy tickets and shape snatch again all right let's open up this master pack let's see what we get it's glowing but you know sometimes that means something sometimes it doesn't but you know, it's, it, it happens sometimes uh chronomaly not gonna happen infernoid we gotta pull more what is this a sunvine card one normal plant monster yeah, we'd need a lot more cards to make this playable. Unfortunately, Assault Counter, I don't think we can use. We don't have a Assault Mode monster. Uh, Crystal Promise can't use that. Buster Whelp can't use that. Sylvan Peacekeeper can't, keep, can't use that. And then this, we definitely can't use. We have all archetypal stuff. 100% archetypal stuff out of that pack. All right, let's open up these Legacy Tickets. We've got two. I'm going to click Skip. We've got Pegasus, the McDonald's promo. Uh, we've got Atomic Firefly. Really cool looking card. I mean, it takes damage. It, it makes our opponent take damage sometimes. So, I mean, that could be good in certain situations. This is a plant support card. And Mirage Dragon's a little too outdated to be good for us. But uh, at least we got another opportunity to open packs, right? All right, we just won the coin flip again. We've been winning a lot of coin flips, actually, which is kind of incredible. Like, the amount of coin flips we've been winning. We're going to activate the effect of Nahata. They can, unfortunately, max see this, but they don't, so we don't have to worry about that now. We're going to normal summon Rochka, get a card. Our opponent's going to see what we're playing, but they're not going to understand what we're playing, so it doesn't matter if they see what we're playing, because our deck is all over the place anyway. They're going to give us a Dinomicious. That's perfect, actually. I'm very happy with that. Um, now, I think we just go into Time Thief, and then we Broken Line down the middle, and we Paleozoic also and i think that should be good enough i don't think we have to activate either one of these two we just no i didn't mean to do that damn it oh my god of course that's going to come back to bite us 100 percent. that's going to come back to bite us i didn't mean to set this here but now i have to live with it i accidentally like it like slipped over one so we're gonna activate time thief we're gonna grab a card off the top they're gonna imperm us i could have negated that but i accidentally slipped it by one accidentally which sucks so now we have to use time thief to move it out of the way what an unlucky stupid situation that's that's so dumb literally so stupid i accidentally clicked like right here rather than right here and it ended up setting right here all right they've got the royal rare dark magician they send diabell star it's already off to not a good start uh i can i can banish this and then he won't be able to send anything and draw cards. We'll see. We'll see what he does first. Yeah, he's going to activate, send two, and then draw that many cards. I guess we'll see what he draws. I could have just banished it, obviously, on, on summon. But yeah, but he's got, like, really good call by. Call by, bonfire. I mean, this is, again, another card I could have negated. Now it's just annoying. That's so infuriating. Like, such a stupid technical error. And now this card becomes totally useless. He's gonna go into what's her name now, Diabell Star. 
in that, that column. Not this one, that column. Why that column? Why not this column? Who knows? He's going to activate, put sinful spoils back here. This is infuriating. He's going to, what does that do? Special summon one. Level one monster. All right, he's going to snake eye oak. He's going to summon that. He has no fire monsters in his graveyard on summon. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and use Dinomicious on summon. I'm going to target. I'm going to banish the purple poison. I'm going to discard purple poison. I'm going to banish that. Yeah, perfect. So that's out of the loop now. This is... Might as well be a dead card, broken line. It just, it was not, it's gonna, it's not gonna accomplish anything anymore. All because I put it in the wrong stupid column. I'm gonna put one back, draw. And I, I think, I think that wraps it up. That, that really sucks. Not that we were gonna win anyway, we're probably gonna lose anyway, but it, it's just so stupid that I clicked it slightly to the left. That, that sucks for me. All right, we won the coin flip yet again. How? I don't know. But we have been winning coin flips today, like a lot of them. Which is good for us because our deck... We haven't drawn Necro Valley either. We pulled that. We haven't drawn it yet. It's a phenomenal card, but we just haven't seen it yet. Our hand is pretty solid. We've got Barrier Statue, Forbidden Chalice, Solemn Judgment. I mean, it's a pretty good hand. So we, I think we summon Barrier Statue and set Solemn and set Forbidden Chalice and pass here on this. Should be good enough, but it just depends on what he's playing. He could always have Harpy. He could always have Snake Eye. You could always have a variety of things that could beat us, so I guess we will have to see what our opponent has. Alright, they're going to summon Dogmatica Ecclesia. I am going to judgment this, because if I don't, he's going to be able to search, plus he's going to be able to get over our barrier statue, so I kind of have to uh, get over, get rid of the Dogmatica Ecclesia. I could have also Forbidden Chalice, but then I lose the barrier statue and Forbidden Chalice, so either way I lose multiple cards. Uh, Nadir Servant, that should wrap up the duel, honestly. Because that'll pop the barrier statue, and then it'll search him out the Maximus. Yeah, that'll that'll wrap it up. I mean, I guess we'll see what he targets. He's going to add back Ecclesia. I don't know why he's adding back Ecclesia. He's going to activate, probably pop barrier statue. Nothing I can do about that. Now he's going to activate Cursed Eldland. Paid hundred, yeah, yeah. I think this this duel's over. There's nothing I can do. Curse uh, any control deck that is constructed is just gonna absolutely tear us apart, especially if we don't have any bloodgates in in play ourselves. All right, we just lost this coin flip. Our hand's looking pretty good. We've got a hand trap, which is nice, and then we've got a variety of other cards: barrier statue, familiar possessed, nefariousness, memory of an adversary. It's not a bad hand whatsoever. Uh, they're going to summon out the Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Bistial Magnum is actually pretty good. And I believe that, like, I guess in this matchup it's pretty good because it might come... Yeah, it's definitely going to be fairly good in this matchup. I, I believe they've got a dark, but I guess I'll have to see which one it is. There's one of the Unchained Monsters is definitely a dark. I just don't remember which one it is. We can activate Bistial Magnum already. Uh, but it's not going to help anything right now because Fiendish Rhino Warrior is still going to resolve no matter what. They're going to send the Shavara and Rakea. They're going to add. Yeah, this is. I'm not going to lie to you. This is probably not a winnable matchup. But I'll try my best, especially since Bistio Magnumut is decent. But unfortunately, his deck is definitely going to be able to outgrind us. He's got multiple fire monsters that are high in attack at 2000 attack to destroy that he's going to summon out more i got to be realistic about this i don't think we're going to win this one yeah he's going to go into the unchained soul of now he can make the rank six if he wants to but he's not i mean maybe he is but he set a card i don't know why he should go into the rank six that ddd monster i guess not he's going to go into unchained soul of rage bestial magnemite is definitely I'm going to use that on lord of yama Alright, he's going to activate this dude right here. I'm going to activate Bistial Magnumut now. Banishing the Yama. And I'm going to summon him right here. And at the end phase, I might be able to pop everything. Summon this back out, that's cool. You know what, I'm just being unrealistic. I'm not going to win this duel. There's just no way, I don't even know why I'm here. I, I, I can't win this duel. Every single card of his floats, I only have mostly destruction through... Certain means, I, I I don't think I can win that duel. 
All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is definitely looking pretty good. We've got finally unpossessed. We finally drew it, but we have Hotel Thrasher and the Magistus, Lord, the Magistus of Mastery. So we're gonna special summon out Photon Thrasher. Then we're gonna normal summon out the Magistus. We're gonna activate its effect to equip. Now this card's pretty good overall. I mean, we get to target the Magistus in our extra deck, target itself, attach one. It makes you wanna pull the other stuff, right? So now we're gonna activate this to search. Search another copy of the same card, which is cool. Ab activate, we're gonna destroy the continuous spell. Draw, discard, that's pretty good. So we're gonna put back the Endymion, so we don't need him anymore. And then we have three interruptions, it's pretty good. So we set three, and then we go into probably Time Thief. I mean, we can go into Time Thief or just sit on the Unpossessed, and that wouldn't be too bad, but I think we go into Time Thief because he's a potential another interruption, which is pretty good. So we'll go Time Thief Redo or summon that out, and we'll just pass on this. That is not a bad board whatsoever. Right, we've got three interruptions guaranteed. No, two interruptions. Uh, we have a floodgate. And we don't have any guaranteed interruptions, if we're being honest. We have a bunch of unguaranteed interruptions. It's going to activate Golden Ladybug. Okay, nothing we could do there. That's going to gain them life points every standby phase. That's, that's something. It's bad, because this might draw out the duel a little longer than I would like it to. But we're going to activate Time Thief Redoer. We're going to grab a card off the top. We're gonna grab a monster. It is Diana the Light Spirit off the top of his deck. You're gonna activate the Gingerbread House. During your opponent's standby phase, have as many monsters they control gain 600, then destroy as many monsters with 2,500 or more, and if you do gain life points. So he's got some sort of gain life point deck. That is gonna destroy our Time Thief, because it'll gain 600 and then destroy and this seems like an annoying card to deal with, so I'm going to go ahead and activate Broken Line. And plus it's a continuous. So since it is in this column, I think we have to kind of do it. He has some sort of life point gain deck, which is a weird deck to play against in, in, in 2024. But sometimes, you know, you got to have fun. Of course. Of course. Of course. Why did I... I mean, I, I had no choice there. I'm going to activate Time Thief Redoer. And if he negates it, which he doesn't seem to, we're fine. So we're going to detach one and then save our Time Thief for later. Pick the attack position monsters, thank god. If he picked back row, that would have been really bad for us, but even if he negated our card, yeah, he's got a life point game deck. I've never seen somebody play a life point game deck outside of like 2003. So it was a spell absorption. Cool. Cool. I, I mean, and then he's got that probably to gain like This is an odd deck. I haven't seen this in quite some time. The Lightning Storm came out of nowhere. This is like a deck from 2003, but psych, we've got Lightning Storm. He's going to... Ladybug is no longer revealed. Draw a card. Forbidden Chalice. I don't think it's going to do much for us, but... Time Thief it is. Let's see what we get off the top of his deck. He has a lot of spawn trap cards, so hopefully we get one of those. We get a monster, a Roma Jar. Well, at least we don't have to deal with it because it can't be destroyed by battle, and that's annoying. But it doesn't matter because we have the out anyway. We have the Forbidden Chalice, but we're going to go to Battle Phase, and we're going to start attacking our opponent. And hopefully we can get some stuff done here. We'll see what they have. They have a trap. Uh, about to take, yep, they gain 4,000. And this duel is going to take a little while, if nothing else, right? So... Yeah, this duel is definitely going to take a while. Charmer monsters can be destroyed by battle. I'm going to go ahead and set this. I'm just going to go ahead and activate the unpossessed now. So that if something, if we do lose something for some reason, we just get it replaced anyway. That is just better. So I'm just going to do that now. Just to save some time. And then this card is a floodgate that probably won't come in handy based on the deck that he's got. He didn't activate the golden ladybug. He forgot to. Oh, I guess he did. That's fine. He's getting in 500 again. We're going to Time Thief, Standby Phase. We're going to grab a card off the top of his deck. It is a monster. you got to be kidding me. This is physically impossible. The dude plays so many spawn trap cards. Come on, Time Thief. So he's got this, this, and this is a mystery card I don't know about. Last time it was a 
freaking lightning storm. That caught me by surprise. He's going to activate Monster Reborn. <laughs> we have the out. We have the Royal Prison. Targeting our Photon. Uh, that's not going to happen. Now we know that's his last card. He has nothing left. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and Royal Prison now. Yeah, no thank you. That's not happening. Alternatively, I could have actually just let it happen. Uh, because it's not like that card would have been really that good. He would have attacked over Witch of the Black Forest. Then I would have gotten a summon from the deck and a search. So I probably should have just let it go through. But out of out of principle, I don't think we let things go through. Alright, we're going to activate Time Thief. Grab another card off the top of his deck. Hopefully this time it's a spell, right? Spell? It's like it's impossible. Another Aroma Jar. Uh, we're going to Normal Summon Rochka. Activate her effect. He's going to gain life points by our effect, which is good for him. Look at that. We're helping him out. We're going to get Necro Valley. Wow, that's amazing. I don't see why not. Let's activate Necro Valley. Why not? Is there a f That's why not. <laughs> that's why not. You gain him life points. That's why you don't activate Necro Valley. So now we just go to Battle Phase, start attacking. We've got tons of, tons of really good damage here. And we've got Necro Valley. We've got Rochka. We've got a lot of stuff that's really good. We finally got him down to 8, 000, under 8,000 life points, and we've been attacking for, like, nonstop. So now we'll just end here. We've got a really good board right now. We've got a search from Witch of the Black Forest. We've got Recursion with the Unpossessed. We've got Royal Prison plus Necro Valley plus Time Thief plus Forbidden Chalice. This is, like, the ultimate board right now. We've, he's got a Golden Ladybug. That's fine. I don't care about that. We're just going to keep building on our, on our, underneath our Time Thief. So we're going to grab another monster. Guardian Angel Jones. This guy just has a classic, I want to gain life point deck. I don't know why, but he, this is what he's got. Thank God we've got Forbidden Chalice. So if that's some sort of flip effect, we're good. Because Forbidden Chalice does work in the damage step. So even if he flips his monster and it's like some flip nonsense, it doesn't matter because we've got... We've got a way to counter it, so at least that's good. All right, we're going to be able to get another monster, Salamangre. Let me guess, it gains life points, gain 2,000 life points, yeah? Uh, normal summon, let's get out here and start attacking now. I'm going to go with Familiar Possess just because his monster could have high defense. Nope, it's just Golden Ladybug. So we're going to attack over that, and then we attack di directly a couple of times. So now we know he doesn't have Golden Ladybug in hand. Anymore, unless he's got a second one in hand, that's always possible. So we're gonna attack directly. Attack a couple times. No, we don't want to use Roach Guy. I haven't, that effect hasn't come up. The send itself to the graveyard effect has not come up yet. I'm curious, uh, is this once per turn? It's not even once per turn. So if he had two copies, he could use both copies. We're gonna activate this in the time in the standby phase. Our time thief redoer right now would make. Oh, we finally got a spell. Prohibit uh, emergency provisions. It's a gain life point card. He's going to activate Child's Play. This card is actually, in certain situations, decent, uh, but definitely not right now. Yeah, Child's Play. I think that should be the game. We're going to activate Redoer to draw a card. Detaching only emergency provisions. Draw a card. Dimensional prison i forgot i played that but yeah that's not a bad card either let's see what we've got there this is just insane what a great like what an amazing like board state for us but not for him we're gonna grab a spell absorption why not let's draw why not we're gonna draw a card off the spell absorption let's see what else we get Crackdown, Jesus Christ, this is like the most amazing board ever. We just attack with Time Thief and finish off this game. Wow. I almost feel bad for our opponent. <laughs> that was like, we drew like the best card over. I don't know if our deck has significantly just gotten better, but like today's been a, a magical day of dueling. Like it's just, we actually are beating decks very consistently and by a very reasonable margin. So I'm, I'm actually kind of shocked by today. All right, we rank up again. So we are now in gold three. We got another hundred gems and we got 
Two Legacy Tick. All right, you know I had to do post game coverage on that deck. I mean, this is all very interesting. It's not even that bad. I guess he just didn't draw into the good stuff. But he's got Eldritch in there, which is a pretty decent boss monster. So I guess the point of the deck is just to make Eldritch or to gain life points. The point of the deck is to gain life points. I don't know why you would do this, but this has been very interesting. It's a gain life point deck. And then he has Eldritch in addition to the gaining life points. Uh, not the worst deck in the world. Plus he has Zeus. Zeus would be a crazy pull for us, but I don't think we're ever going to pull it. But it would be a crazy pull for us. All right, here we go. Last pack, most likely of the episode. We've got a Master Pack. Oh, actually, we got the Legacy Pack. Let's see. Let's see what we got out of here. A Minerva, can't use that. Got to pull, the, like, like I said, always got it with the Hidden Arsenal book. Uh, Tune, can't use Tune cards. Uh, Metamor, you can't use that. Uh, might be able to use this. This card is actually really good. Like, really, really good, and we have a lot of Spellcasters. But I would need more than just this card. Yeah, I, I would need more than just this card uh, because it when when your opponent summons normal summons special summons a monster while you control another face of spell card, so we have to have another face of spell card, and then we have to also have it, their their monster cannot attack or activate its effect, and then if you do not control a spellcaster, destroy this card. So we need a spellcaster, another face of spell card, and this card, which isn't impossible, but we just I don't think we have enough of those. But that's not bad. Rika can't use that. And then I don't think that there's any way that we could possibly use this. But it's not a bad card. So last pack here has nothing that we can use. Maybe this card. But we would need other things. Like it's it's definitely good. Because we can like Necro Valley plus. We can Necro Valley plus a. Um, Necro Valley plus a Spellcaster. Or Dimensional Fissure plus the Spellcaster plus this card. Like we have things that we can use with this. But we don't have enough of it. But it's definitely not a bad card. Um, and then I don't believe anything else is really usable. We uh, always hit an arsenal bulk 100% every single time. All right, and last pack of the episode, last packs, I guess, are these two. We're going to go to skip. We're going to see what they are. This is a usable card, very usable card. We just don't play level twos. Detach one material, target one monster in the graveyard, add it to the hand, shuffle one card in your hand to the... Yeah, this is a completely, like, usable card. Maybe with the Paleozoics we can use it. Uh, this is insect support. Unfortunately, I cannot use this card. Uh, this is a dragon that is kind of generic. It just does piercing. It's not a bad card. And then we've got Ronin Toad, which I could have sworn was banned. But we suddenly get that. I mean, that I, is this not banned? I guess maybe that's only in the T. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not banned here. Here, they banned Totally Awesome. And in the TCG, they banned Ronin Toad. So, I mean, it's cool that we've got Ronin Toad, but we don't have Swap Frog and... Dupe Frog and that entire brigade of goats. Uh, but we have some Paleozoics in there. We have Ronin Toad. So that's not, it's not bad though. I I, I actually like Ronin Toad in quite a bit. And then of course Herald. Actually we have multiple. I didn't even know we had it. And here we are getting a second copy. Maybe one day we'll play Frogs. We have a few Sprites actually. We have Sprite Starter. And we have I think the Orange Sprite. And then that's it. We just have like that. Maybe one day we play a rank 2 deck. I don't know when. Very far in the future. But maybe one day we do play that. We've got Herald of Pure Light. Another level 2 card. Uh, rank 2. So that's pretty cool. La 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 la. La 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 la.